Hi, welcome to the National Grid's Choice Online News and welcome to the Steinberg Review. I'm Robin Steinberg and today we have a very interesting uh, new gallery here in Singapore uh, that is none other than Sana Gallery. And we have here uh, Mr. Asad Razouk, who is the founder, who is going to tell us more about uh, his gallery. And of course, uh, please do visit their, their gallery website at www.sanagallery.com for more information. Uh, Mr. Asad, uh, well, thank you for joining us. You know. And I know that uh, you have set up this wonderful gallery that's based on a Middle Eastern uh, profile. Tell us why do you decide to set up this gallery here in Singapore? And the, uh, the name Sana, you know, what was the, the, the meaning behind it? The name? Um, well, Robin, thank you for being here, first of all. Um, Sana means splendor in Arabic. And um, as it happens, it's my mother's first name. Wow. Uh, in addition, it means there in Bahasa, Indonesia. And as far as I know, it doesn't mean anything negative in any Southeast Asian language. So we settled on that name after some um, uh, minor market research, uh, primarily as an homage to my mother, as I said, and primarily because um, of, of its meaning, i.e. splendor, and the fact that it also has a regional, uh, you know, rings uh, positively in, in the region. Uh, we're here because the Middle East today is exp experiencing, as you know from the news, upheaval. Societies are transforming. And uh, when societies transform in a wrenching and a fundamental way, um, the artsy flourishes and the productivity that's coming out of the Middle East today is some of the most astounding in the world because the artists, as you see on TV, some people obviously express themselves through demonstrations, for example. Others express themselves through uh, fighting. However, there's a large uh, majority that express themselves through being silent and there are artists that are also expressing themselves through their art. And the art scene, therefore, has been flourishing. We thought that uh, Singapore, where I live, um, as a regional, not only financial, but also social and shopping and art center, uh, should have Middle East, contemporary Middle Eastern art represented um, for, for, for that reason. In addition, there are affinities between Southeast Asia and the Middle East region that go back hundreds of years in terms of, for example, trade routes between the two, some uh, immigration from the Gulf region into Indonesia and Malaysia uh, hundreds of years ago some remaining familiar, familiar, uh, familiar uh, links. Uh, Singapore has, a, for example, interestingly, has a history where a lot of the land in Singapore, pre-independence, was actually owned by Arab families that had come from Yemen to Singapore via Indonesia, and particularly Java and Sumatra. So the links are all there, and we think, therefore, that the interest should be there especially if we play our role as partly a contemporary art gallery and partly as an educational uh, institution that's promoting a positive image of the Middle East. Now, how important uh, is your contribution to the Southeast Asian community here with your gallery? Uh, you are set up to accomplish, to get to the people in Southeast Asia to understand better uh, more about the Middle East, as yes. you, as you yes. said. And so how important is your role is going to be in the coming months and years? Well, look, I think we are... Um, we will try very hard to promote a positive picture of the Middle East and its people and its history um, in this part of the world. Southeast Asia, because to me Singapore 
is 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 a, is a center. So Singapore is representative of not only the, the, the Singapore community, but also Indonesia and Malaysia and the Philippines and Thailand uh, and Vietnam and, and southern India and some of southern China as well. So Singapore is really a center for some one and a half billion people. Um, and I think even if we make a very small impact in promoting a positive image of the Middle East to counterbalance a bit all those negative images that we get daily on TV, uh, we would have done our bit to promote the um, history and, and, and outstanding uh, thousands year old culture of the Middle East. Now, speaking about the, the culture of the Middle East, now, what is the definition uh, and the culture of, of being a Middle Eastern uh, person? Uh, because uh, you know, each region has its own definition. So what is culture for the Middle East in the own way? Well, the, the Middle East is a region that's defined by a common history, uh, a common language by and large, Arabic, um, a dominant religion, Islam, but not alone, i.e. dominant religion that's interacting with other religions on a daily basis. Uh, you know, more than 10% of Egypt's population is Christian, for example. More than 15% of Syria's population is Christian. Some 40% of Lebanon's population is Christian. And there are other minorities as well across the Middle East. So the culture is really an infusion of some 7,000 years of history. Um, of which um, uh, there are at least 2,000 of common history, which translates into common, uh, uh, which the outside world sees today as mostly a common language, mostly a common language. Now, what is art to you, and what sort of criteria do you look for uh, for artists who wish to display their work here in your gallery? I think we will try to display two types of artists in, uh, in, in our gallery. The first one would be uh, someone that we think is an emerging talent, uh, that we are uh, uh, perhaps where we are contributing to uh, building their, their profile worldwide by doing it in this region. Then the other category of artists would be more established artists that are perhaps already in museums um, around the world and that we will bring to, to Singapore really to uh, really share the, the quality of that art with our audience in Southeast Asia. What kind of plans uh, does Sana Gallery has in place for the next five years? Well, <clears throat> five years is a very long time. I think uh, I can speak to 2013, so next year. We will be exhibiting next year uh, a, a Palestinian artist, for example, on speaking on, on and to social issues in the Middle East. Uh, social issues, for example, literacy, or again, uh, like our current uh, exhibition by Rania Matar, the, the role of the woman in the Middle East. Uh, we will be exhibiting uh, three Saudi Arabian artists, all of them women. Uh, speaking to the uh, culture of uh, the, the Gulf region and the uh, Saudi Arabian society, which is not at all what, what people might think looking at it from far away. Um, but, you know, broadly speaking, our plans, and we have other exhibitions plans, for example, we've got a very prominent Lebanese uh, painter who will be here in March. Uh, that we will be exhibiting and who's a known value at Christie's, for example, uh, and, and others. But I think the, kind of the, the main point is really to try and bring to Southeast Asia a good, varied collection of some of the outstanding art that's coming out of the Middle East and to do that over the next few years. Amazing. Now, how did you arrive you know, creating this passion of having a gallery uh, in Singapore. Uh, is it something that you have dreamed of for, for a very long time? And are you a collector yourself? Well, I, um, th there are several factors that somehow resulted in 
uh, wanting to open a gallery. I think one of them is the fact that, although perhaps a very bad painter, I do paint myself uh, as, a, as a therapy. Uh, so I've always had an inclination to at least uh, express myself through. In addition, um, uh, the, the, um, in my travels, I have uh, collected some contemporary Middle Eastern art going back some 15 years. And I saw firsthand the explosion of creativity that's taking place. Uh, and yeah, so what you do first is you start buying it, right? Um, but then eventually, you, uh, maybe the enthusiasm catches up with you and you want to share it. Not, not your own collection, but you want to share the, the, the talent that's coming out of the region. I mean, I wish we could do, frankly, more than what we're going to do because we can probably handle um, eight exhibitions a year. Whereas, you know, I'd like to exhibit a lot more artists than, than there are. I mean, I think there must be 10,000 artists across the Arab world today looking for outlets to show their work. So uh, the, the task at hand is very, very challenging. Amazing. Now, what sort of advice would you give for first-time you know, uh, collectors you know, who wish to, uh, to explore Middle Eastern art and they want to buy pieces of art? Do you foresee uh, Middle Eastern art as a, as a form of investment or should they buy it because it's a, a passion or as something that they really like? What is your take on that and advice for first-time collectors? That's a very good question. Um, that's a very good question. I think uh, two, two things on that note. I think the first one is really art must be purchased when you like it. You know, never, I would say, never purchase a piece of art just because someone told you that it's a good piece of art or because you think it's price it's going to go up. You must always like it. So that's kind of, that, that must be a driver. On the uh, investment side, you know, if, if you want to call it that way, art is a relatively um, safe home for money these days. Uh, I think the market for art uh, worldwide has been estimated at some $25 billion a year. You know, so it's, uh, uh, but, but you can't just buy art with um, an investment mode. You have to actually like what you're buying, I think. When you like what you're buying, as long as you're working with artists that you think have an infrastructure behind them, there is no reason why the value of what you're buying will go down. By infrastructure, I mean uh, there needs to be a gallery, for example, committed to their career and committed to pushing their career and their work over multiple number of years. So we will, for example, tend to exhibit uh, our artists once every year or once every year and a half for that reason. In addition, I think you need to look for signs that the art that you're buying even if maybe not in a museum today, has a path to be in a museum one of these days. Uh, and that's kind of just being prudent from an from a investment perspective. But as long as you like the art, and you think that the artist has an infrastructure around him, then um, it's definitely a place to be for some of your money. No, speaking of investments, you know, collecting art. How does one store art? Do they have to be air conditioned all the time? You know, there's many collectors out there, they, they, they have no idea yeah. uh, how they store art, especially if they would buy a, a, a photo or a painting from, from your gallery. Uh, how, how do they store it? I think that's a very good question. And, and it's a particularly good question in our weather here in Singapore which makes it more challenging to also own and operate a gallery. Because that's a, that is a constant uh, issue, I think. Uh, look, my standard answer to that question is treat it the way you treat your TV. Right? So, at the end of the day, you need to hopefully hang it in your home. However, 
in, in many cases, you will run out of space in your home. And when you do, you can store it until you buy your additional second property that gives you perhaps more space to hang it on the wall. And when you store it, buy a humidifier. That would be the key piece of advice, I think, for in, in Singapore. <laughs> Once again, uh, uh, Asad, thank you for sharing with us and thank you for sharing with us your wonderful gallery, Sana Gallery, you know, based in Singapore. And please do drop by at your uh, at gallery anytime soon, or you can look up at your website at www.sanagallery.com. And uh, once again, Robin Steinberg uh, here at the National Business Choice, the Steinberg Review. Thank you for joining me.